What's up everyone? I'm Jaren and today we are talking about the unbearable weight of massive talent or the Nick Cage movie because that's what everyone else is going to say to cut it short when they're purchasing their ticket at the box office. The movie is co-written and directed by Tom Gormican, who has also did That Awkward Moment which didn't really do too well. Now the movie stars Nicolas Cage as Nick Cage channeling his iconic characters as he is caught between the CIA and a superfan who may or may not be connected to a cartel kidnapping played by Pedro Pascal. Now I'm not counting his limited work as well as his indie releases and I'm also not counting his animation stuff like Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse or The Croods but it has been... 11 years since we've actually had Nicolas Cage as the starring role in a big marketed Hollywood film. And that was what? Ghost Rider 2? So it was a blessing to see him back on the big screen again, being just him. He's not really being a character, he's just Nicolas Cage. And I absolutely love that we get to see him just slightly untamed and then kind of composed at the same time, while also handling a story. There's a little bit of action, a little bit of crime thriller, a little bit of family drama, and absolutely just balls-to-the-wall comedy. And for a comedy that is basically two dudes hanging out and just letting the whole film just take the wheel, this is how you do it once upon a time in Hollywood. No offense, Quentin Tarantino, but this was so much more entertaining. Now I do have to say that the marketing for this film might be a little bit jarring because a lot of the humor is based off of how much of a Nicolas Cage fan you are. And they do make various and may I mean an abundant amount of movie references, especially his own. And there were maybe two movies that I have not seen or known about Nicolas Cage that I didn't get and I did feel like I lost out like a bunch of the humor in it. Although I do feel that the acid trip between Pascal and Cage was the highlight of the movie, my entire theater, well, basically myself, my friend Aaron, and the ladies in front of us were just cackling throughout the whole damn thing. I almost really need to watch it again because there was like a few lines that I just couldn't hear over the laughter. There is one big element of the script that I highly admire and it's when it's kind of making fun of itself because Nick Cage and Pedro Pascual actually end up talking about making a movie together and then they talk about like what should we make? Uh, maybe it should be very character driven or maybe it should have like a kidnapping and it could be like funny and dramatic and action packed and though you have a little bit of something for everybody. I thought having those conversations in a movie like this was just absolutely perfect. It made the movie geek inside me just kind of uh, feel all warm inside. With that being said, the movie does paint itself in a more predictable path, following a lot of the crowd-pleasing tropes, which I didn't mind at all, but I did feel it left no surprises for me. And considering how much Hollywood talk that Nicolas Cage does in this film, I actually was hoping for more cameos, like kind of more on the same level of Entourage, just we have to have Nick Cage as our main character. And it was also kind of cool that we got to see some of his films and his other characters kind of come into little play and referred to. As creepy as it was, I kind of like his little interdemon exchange and interplay with the younger version, CGI'd, de version of himself. Not for once was I convinced that Ball Tiffany Haydish and Ike Barinholtz were CIA agents. I'm glad that they were the worst parts of the movie, as well as the weakest. And to be honest, the movie could have done completely without them. I do have to say one of my favorite surprises in this movie was Sharon Hogan and Lily Moshin who play Nick Cage's ex-wife and estranged daughter. They added a lot of emotional weight and balance to this movie, especially kind of humanizing Nick Cage's side that he really neglects when he's being so egotistic with Hollywood. And Pedro Pascal, I swear that man does not get enough credit. Like, a lot of people were really shamed on him when he unveiled his identity in The Mandalorian, but he's been in many other films, and he is a very talented actor. I love a lot of his comedic interplay, especially with Nicolas Cage, and how much he just appreciates, worships him. My friend Aaron and I, we had a little bit of a secondhand embarrassment because there's the scene where they come to the secretive room, the shrine of Nicolas Cage, if you will, and Pedro Pascal is just standing there, kind of shame, kind of proud of all his collector's memorabilia of Nick Cage's work. And it's kind of funny because Nick Cage doesn't recognize half the shit, and... <laughs> 
<laughs> some of this stuff was even from like some of his smaller projects like there's like a simple chainsaw and it was like oh look there's the chainsaw from mandy like oh yeah that was a masterpiece and nicholas cage's performance is nothing short from extravagant the man is a genius he can do anything in almost any role he's given i'm just hoping that this is the start of a new era for nicholas cage in his film career i just don't want to see way too much VOD work. I want to see him in more big Hollywood projects where he is the main star once again. And for a movie like this, he made an impressive comeback. Not that he went anywhere. Alright guys, that's all I got for you today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Jan Ugbanawag. Look forward to more reviews and I will see you guys at the movies. Take care. Let's kill